to accept the President's offer and to jointly combine both programs specifically to go to the moon. And then he was mercilessly killed just days later. And there's NSSC memos to this effect. There's his son's recollections to this effect. And I was able to go back and I was able to find a record of a Russian Cosmos mission that had failed the day before, which apparently was the trigger for the Premier to make the decision, we cannot do this alone. If we combine our forces, we can use the technological strengths of both nations to do this together. And in, on, on, on a planet now that is so torn with strife and concern and fear and paranoia, to see that at the height of the Cold War, these two men were statesmen, and they were trying to do something on behalf of all the rest of us, to me is so affirming and I'm very glad we found this evidence. The question is, if NASA's military organization and hide this from American public, why Soviets hide it from Soviet public? I think both cultures believe that this information is going to destroy us, that culturally it was not time. You'll notice that the president was killed, President Kennedy was killed. Premier Khrushchev suffered a political death within months of this happening. I think he was deliberately sidelined for having the audacity to try to do something beyond the Soviet system. The Soviet system is no more. There is a new wind blowing in both cultures. Here in the United States, we're looking for a whole new administration, a whole new view forward. We have an opportunity now to look back at the record and say, here these two men tried to do something 40 years ago to put us on a different path and with what's waiting out there, we cannot miss the opportunity again. So what is the, what is the mystery, you know, Kathleen? What, like, in few words, like, like, in one minute, can you explain the uh, regular Russian people? What, what NASA and I think the Soviet space program have independently both discovered is that we're not alone. That there are ruins on the moon left by some culture extraordinarily advanced beyond us now. That there is information, there's science, there's technology, there's wonders beyond imagining that if brought back and used for the benefit of mankind could advance us all. And that it would show us that in fact we are all brothers and sisters. That we are not these separate divided isms and separate divided political systems, but in fact we're humanity standing in, in front of the ineffable, standing in front of who are we really and where have we come from and we are being kept from this information by a handful of tiny timid men. And this a key for this is a special filter? What is like, you know? Well, to see the data, you just have to get the original NASA film. It's also present on the Soviet film. The Soviet Union had a stunning series of photographs, which we have in Dark Mission, in my book, which show in some of the early unmanned shots that the Soviets sent to the moon, these same structures. And I can provide you with copies, if you'd like copies, from your own Soviet space program that confirm absolutely what I've said that NASA's been hiding. Both cultures, I think, looked at Brookings, and they both said, we do not want to disturb the status quo, and they made decisions that have affected humanity 40 years down the road. Why well, did this press conference today, not like 10 years ago or, you know, five years ago? What today? Good question. I think, in part, as I said in the briefing, it's because the NASA data is leaking. I think the availability of the World Wide Web has made it so much easier for whistleblowers to quietly slip real information out there without being traced. It's available now on these NASA websites. You just have to download it and put it in a computer and turn up the brightness and you'll see the structures. That can happen anywhere in the world because of the World Wide Web. I think it's partly because of technology and its time has come and partly because both people, both our people, the Russian people and the American people are so absolutely sick to death of being lied to. They want the truth. And the, and the, and the um, success of Dark Mission, which is now in its fourth printing, and made the New York Times bestseller list only three weeks after being released, I think is a testimony to people's innate need to know the truth and to suspect when they've been lied to. But it's really, I'm sorry, the last one. It's like really serious accusation, like, for example, NASA is a military agency. What do you expect, like after you now like, tell your information, what do you expect the next, you know? Do you expect You mean, will the empire strike back? No, no, any, no, no, no. I mean, any, any, uh, do you want to appeal to the Congress? Do you want to appeal, okay. you know? We want, I want the American people to buy my book. The documentation of everything we said this morning in less than two hours is in 600 pages, with footnote after footnote after footnote. 
I then want them to demand of the U.S. Congress that we have hearings, congressional hearings, on the idea that NASA is not a civilian agency, but it's really a military agency masquerading as a civilian agency, and it's been hiding all the good stuff from all the rest of us. Then I want to see relations between Vladimir Putin, or whoever runs, the, runs Russia, and the Americans reopen with the idea of joint missions to the moon, specifically to find what this technology could give all of us and to resume the dialogue that President Kennedy and President Khrushchev began so long ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you please repeat your name? Uh, okay. My name is Richard C. Hoagland. I am head of the Enterprise Mission, which is a private research and public policy group. I've written several books, one called Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA, just released. And um, I'm on a crusade to get at the truth. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks you, uh, as a scientist, do you believe in these kind of structures and all these uh, uh, rubber things? Well, if you, if you look at the technology and the, uh, the engineering and construction, as well as the way the pictures bring out uh, all the data and stuff, I think it leaves one with, you almost don't have any other choice, I would say that there is absolutely something physically solid there that we need to investigate more, and that the information that was brought back, having been withheld, is now the time we need to get it brought forward so the rest of uh, other scientists and engineers can publicly come forward. I, I was quite concerned back at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory with all of the geologists and scientists that were uh, analyzing the rocks, the moon rocks, as to whether or not uh, they knew what they were really looking at or were they getting all of the material that was brought back. And I think uh, if we're running a timeline on when the spacecraft splashed down in the open ocean, when they picked up the astronauts, when they picked up the samples and put them in the sample return containers, there is a gap of time in there where certainly things could have been removed. And I don't know that for a fact, but we're looking at the timelines to try to determine perhaps some of the things that Mr. Hogan has shown uh, were purposely removed. It's just my own personal theory. What do you think NASA has been hiding the structures and all information related to that? It all comes back to the Brookings Institute report that was, was published even before we went. And uh, we saw that in, I think, the Philippines when we discovered some Aboriginal people back in the Philippines. And over the period of time, the contact with an advanced, their, their whole culture, society, and everything else was totally collapsed. And that's what Brookings was warning us against, is that if we make public, if you'll go back and, and look at how religion and science, back in the very beginning of the, in the late 50s and early 60s, their attitude was, their, the religious, there, there are no other uh, intelligent beings in the universe. God just created man, the only ones here. But yet now you go and ask the same questions of the scientists and engineers and religions today, up to 90 plus percent will come and say, oh, absolutely, there's bound to be. It's an awful lot of wasted space if they're not. And you were a young man, and you saw by your own eyes how the NASA's, you know, uh, staff was crushed. The photos. Yes, um, I was about 26 years old. To say I was the youngest uh, test pilot with Grumman at the time. There were five of us. And then when I was over at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory, taking over from uh, Dr. Jeffrey Warner, uh, in my opportunities, I was in and out of the photo lab all the time. Plus, I maintained all the records at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory and all the film and pictures there. Uh, my going in and out of the laboratory, I actually did observe uh, on at least one occasion there where they were brushing it out. And there was another building I went into where it was classified top secret, but having a clearance, I was able to get in there. And looking at the selection of the landing sites and the reasons and the timing that we had to go on such a mission to land there was rather interesting. And now going back and looking in retrospect, we can see why they chose those specific sites and, and the timing they had to get there. And one more question, sorry, uh, because it's not a new, you know, version. There are a lot of like conspiracy theories about like moon, you mean astronauts in the moon. What your presentation at press conference is different from other conspiracy theories, like which was presented before, like about the moon mission and everything. Well, I think the biggest difference is, is that we have the data, the documents the information to put it forward. In any court of law, they'll say, let the documents speak for themselves. And I, I hope that we presented the information to show that we do have the documents, that I did maintain the records, I did keep the files, uh, I did keep the emails, I can prove exactly what happened. And so there is a big difference between people just talking, talks cheap. <laughs>